Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of That Solo Life, the podcast about PR pros who own their own businesses. My name is Michelle Kane of Voice Matters, and I'm here with my fantastic co-host, Karen Swim of Words for Hire, and she also happens to be the owner of Solo PR Pro, the uh, amazing organization that uh, is the place where our tribe hangs out. Hey, Karen, how are you doing this week? Hey, Michelle, I am, I'm here, I'm surviving and pushing ahead. <laughs> it's Honesty one of those weeks good. where uh, I uh, have truly been waiting for Friday and thinking every day, oh my God, how is it not the end of this week yet? But you know, that happens. It does. It does. Yeah, I feel I feel my Friday tireds coming in. Usually they hit around Thursday afternoon. I get my Friday tired on a Thursday, which I'm sure everyone out there is so excited to hear. <laughs> it just seems sometimes, yeah. No, it's it's good to be busy. And it's good to have our challenges, but sometimes it'd be nice to have you know. I'll take no challenges for a while, a little bit. That'd be nice too. But speaking of challenges, I could our... have done with a lot less right. of this week, which has been like <laughs> the week of weird. That's what oh. I've designated the week of weird. Oh, okay. Where I so like many it. weird things have happened, and so many meetings have been so incredibly strange that I have been thinking, huh? Hmm. Never yeah. would have dreamed that up. What is out there in the ether? There you have it's... it. There's what a lot out, out there, there in the ether. I don't know if we really want well, to know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But, yeah, so speaking of weird, sometimes things can get weird in yes. personal relationships, working relationships, volunteer situations, client situations. So today we thought we would talk about professional politics. And no, not that kind of politics, because no one wants to talk about that stuff anymore. We're just... <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about you know situations yeah situations where you know you you definitely want to have a good rapport with everyone that you have to work with or you know it, not to say that it's even coming from you but sometimes you know you might find yourself in a in a situation where you, you realize oh oh so that person doesn't really like that person and that's why Maybe this isn't getting done. You know, it can affect your work sometimes. Um, just all the relational yeah. things that might be flying under the radar or in front of you. <laughs> well, you know, what I found um, interesting, I know that maybe a lot of people can relate to this. When you come out of the corporate workforce, one of the things that you think, oh, my gosh, I will not miss that me meetings that's one, you know, meetings about the meetings, meetings to plan for the meeting, meetings to talk about the plan of the meeting after the meeting, post meeting, just lots and lots of endless meetings. But also one of the things that you think, oh, thank God, you know, I'm going to work on my own. I will be able to have control over my environment is no more office politics. And what I have discovered in my own work is that that's, true to a degree in that, yes, I do have more control and I'm not invested in those politics and really necessarily in the center of it all the time, but it doesn't mean that you get to escape it and you sort of have to watch out for those subtle traps because right. they can come from, you know, your work with clients. It can come from volunteer organizations. I mean, it can come from, you know, um, groups that you're involved in or just casual groups. There can be, you know, neighborhood politics there. You know, it's it is something that you can't escape. And I it, so it definitely can affect you professionally. And I know that um, I've been in recent situations where um, with a volunteer organization, where it feels like a bad episode of Days of Our Lives. <laughs> and these are people within the industry, and I'm thinking, I didn't sign up for this. And yes, yes. I don't want to do this. And I know that other people are having to deal with this. And so, unfortunately, we can't always distance ourselves from all of these situations. But what do you do? You know, how do you handle this? How do you rise above it? How do you stay out of the fray while 
maintaining those relationships. Right, right. I mean, one way is to just decide, you know, I am not going to be a party to this. I, I'm going to do what I came here to do as best I can, given those circumstances. I, you know, I was one, one bit of advice I've given to friends in the past is, you know, it, it may be a game of monopoly, but if you don't put your playing piece on the board, there's nothing they can do. You know, if you choose not to play, but however, that's not always an option, right? Because you still have to deal with people and, and navigate the waters. Uh, I know sometimes there have been situations where I've been a little blindsided. You know, you think, oh, you know, we're all getting along and these things are good. And then you find out, oh, what? <laughs> oh, yes. oh, well, that's not good. So that's why, you know, that's why that happened. And, oh, <laughs> so... I guess it's, you know, in some ways it's helpful think, to have insight into what's really happening, but you should never let it damage, you know, damage you professionally or damage the work you're trying to do. And that that can be very challenging. It, it can be very challenging. And I think about situations where, you know, perhaps it's a client and perhaps your client contact is involved in in some nasty office politics and we always want to be there for our clients and we want to um, we want them to understand that they have our support right and so in those situations I think it's really important to not discuss the politics of it all so there's the artful redirect because you yes. clearly have to have communications with these people, whether it's a client or whether it's a volunteer organization. So you want to maintain open conversations about the work at hand and artfully redirect when the conversations spin to things that are outside of that that seem to become toxic. And, and you can do that in subtle ways by simply artfully changing the direction of the conversation Right. You can say, oh, well, you know what, I don't really have anything to weigh in on there, but, you know, what about X, Y, Z? Yes. If it becomes yeah. necessary, you can, you know, subtly disengage. Um, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I've got another meeting to go to. I'll exactly. have to chat with you another time. Exactly. And that's the beauty of working on our own. It gives us that leeway. And, and really, it all, it all comes down to putting into practice you know, the tactics that we would advise our clients to to employ, you know, in difficult situations and difficult communicative situations. So it's, yes. you know, trying to say the right thing, you know, not 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 being false, but, you know, just trying exactly. to serve the situation and your client well, given the circumstances, because like you say, in, in a in any given client situation, if your point of contact is involved in some office politics, you know, it may very well be impacting your work. So it can become a, a situation for you if it's, you know, not helping your work move forward in the way that's desired. You know, they may say, well, why isn't this getting done? And as much as you'd like to say, well, it's that guy. <laughs> you have to yes. find a way yes. to make your points <laughs> and, uh, you know, still well, keep and relationships running. All of that really speaks to and validates why it's so important to always, you know, when it comes to the work part anyway, it's so important to do consistent business development for exactly yes. those reasons, because things sure. can go wrong internally that have nothing to do with you, right. but you can't allow yourself to be a part of those discussions where your, your reputation can be damaged or where your name can become a part of these toxic conversations. And I, sometimes that's very difficult because sometimes you really do have relationships with people and they're coming to you for counsel. And initially it may just seem like normal relationship counsel. And then before you know it, you're in the middle of, of this political situation and you're thinking, I really don't want to be a part of this and I'm not, you know, choosing sides. I don't want to be in this. And so you have to really be careful. And I think just be on guard for the right. types of conversations that you have with people and you make sure that you 
um, don't allow yourself to become, you know, involved where you really didn't want to be a part of it. Right, right. You know, keep your nose clean, focus on the work, protect yourself. I'm a huge fan of the follow up email confirming conversations. (laughs) <laughs> not to not to use the drag yield per our conversation but you know hey just to recap this is what we discussed this is what i need blah 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 so you can just point to that and say there <laughs> it's it's nothing to do. it's not me um you know not that it's about avoiding blame or anything but it just yeah it's, it gets difficult and especially like you said with volunteer organizations you know i think thankfully i've i've been pretty fortunate i really haven't encountered any of that but you know think of double the stress you're doing this to do a good thing on your own time and you know you think oh i have to deal with this now really aren't people amused enough in their lives (laughs) i have uh this and it's really weird like this year i've noticed this a lot that wherever there are people there are politics, unfortunately. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we can just stop with the people, though. <laughs> if we can just stop with the people. I mean, <laughs> I tell you, it's really, really interesting. Um, I am seeing it, you know, at the dog park, among the dog parents, oh. you know, there's politics. There's just, they're just everywhere. And so... I've learned to just smile and move yeah. along. Like, oh, exactly. okay, well, see you later. <laughs> that's, that's great that that's how you feel about that. Have a nice night. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. We're going to walk this way. Oh, you know what? We're going to do another loop. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I tell you, it comes back to, you know, I'm choosing not to engage in that way. You're not going to lead me down that path. I'm here for this purpose. And like you said, the, the redirect, you know, it's media training 101. Redirect. <laughs> redirect. Exactly. Exactly. And we'll, we'll again, see, that we'll can be a like little our... bit. Yeah, oh, sorry, that ahead. can be a little I'll bit. Just trickier with a client but it can be done it can yeah i was just going to be stupid and say it will sound like a gps redirect (laughs) (laughs) oh what was that from friends pivot (laughs) oh my goodness it may get us some strange looks but at least you know i've broken the ice oh my goodness so yes you're all out there getting a window into what it's like to actually work with us yes but yeah, I mean, it, it, it is challenging and, and sadly it, a lot of it gets in the way and which is frustrating um, because, you know, just thinking from the perspective of a solo um, business owner, a solo professional, you're there to get a job done. You're there to complete, you know, a program or strategy as opposed to an employee who, well, I'm here all day, so whatever kind of thing. You know, you don't really have the luxury of that time to devote to navigating situations that are out of your hands. I agree. So, so I agree. Just... And I think my advice is don't, no matter how much you may really like, genuinely like someone and maybe there is a friendship, whether it's a volunteer situation or a client situation, don't allow yourself to be pulled into anything that could hurt your reputation or damage the work. And that's where you really have to to clearly make a separation and make sure that you keep those conversations high level and disengage when they're veering into, you know, topics that could be potentially toxic or damaging. You don't want to, I mean, I believe that, you know, sometimes it's nice to get the insider details, but you don't want to be a part of the gossip. And if that means that there are things that you don't know, so be it, because we all want to be in that position where our businesses do not rely on a single account anyway, because we're consistently, you know, doing business development and we have opportunities in our pipeline. And, you know, those things that are going on with clients, they're going to happen regardless. And right. It, it just don't waste your effort or energy trying to be involved or even trying to be an ally 
to a client contact who may be embroiled in it, you can definitely sympathize and say, well, you know, that sounds like a really tough situation and then redirect. Right. Because it could turn into a situation where, you know, you know, as, as, as it goes with families, right. It's, it's like, oh, you know, my cousin and I might fight like cats and dogs, but if an outsider calls us on it, well, we're going to say, Hey, you can't say that we can say it. It could be, you could find yourself in a similar situation of, well, you know, our company, our people are going to stick together, you know, who are you to get involved with this? So it's just better to, you know, do what you can to Absolutely. steer clear of it and still get what you need to get the job done. I agree. And I mean, sometimes you may even have strong opinions one way or the other about something right. that's happening. Maybe there is something happening that you don't agree with, but our advice is see it, understand it, have your feelings about it, but don't get involved in it because it can bring you down and that's not something that you want. I mean, whether or not uh, your client contact or client contacts, because we do usually have pretty deep relationships into the organization, you want to be in a position where your work continues no matter who those people are internally. Exactly, exactly. Well, we've solved another set of the world's problems on the solo PR pro front. (laughs) I hope we have. I hope we have. (laughs) Or at least, you know, kind of help you get a reset because sometimes it's just nice to, you know, we find when we're, or at least I'm speaking for myself, sitting here alone at my desk, I can talk to myself in my head and think, oh, maybe that's not it. Maybe that is. So hopefully this podcast is serving as a way for you to, you know, just hear others that are in your situation and go, okay, thank you. That's what I was thinking. Or that's a good idea. So Hopefully we have brought that to you today with this episode and um, we hope you subscribe, visit soloprpro.com and we'll see you next time on that solo life. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, everyone.